And I had a session the other day where someone's like, why, why do I settle for 5D? I'm going to go like 6D, 7 I'm going to go way beyond. And I'm like, yes, but 5D is the portal to multidimensionality. Welcome to Activations with JJ. In today's episode, we'll be discussing all things multidimensional, including accessing our multidimensional gifts and integrating all of our multidimensional aspects. This is a topic that is very, very important to me, and I'm excited to dive into it with you. So let's get going. Hello, dear soul family. Here we are again for another episode, and I am always grateful for you, for your willingness to listen as I ramble on about my starseed journey, all the things I'm learning, and you are here to co-create with me. If you happen to be following me on YouTube and want to give just a little thank you, you could also like and subscribe the video. I would love to encourage you to do that. If you are on Apple Podcast, a rating and a little comment always helps. So thank you, thank you for your support, allowing me to continue to spread all of the concepts, all of these multidimensional pieces of information to the rest of the collective as we experience this ascension process. Today, the subject is very near and dear to my heart. Many of you know that about four years ago, I ended up receiving information around a modality that spirit dropped into my awareness under the name specifically of multidimensional soul integration. I still remember creating this Google Doc and at top it said, multidimensional soul integration. And then I just started typing all of the things that spirit was bringing through. Many of you don't know probably that when I first started channeling, most of it came through written. Most of it came in automatic writing. And then when the information was coming in so fast and so much, I ended up using my phone voice memo feature. And I would like even be driving down the road, I'd pull it out and I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. And all this stuff would start coming through. One of the first sets of beings that I that I connected with and started bringing consistent messages through was actually the Elohim, which is interesting. And I know there are many other channelers out there who connect with them. It's a really beautiful energy to connect to, and they have a lot of really amazing perspective. But when I received the name Multidimensional Soul Integration, I just continued to receive more and more and more about it, what it was, how it worked, and I was being taught by my guides, by my higher self. I have a lot of galactic guides. I've since connected Green Tara, and she's the overlighting guide that is in agreement to be part of multidimensional soul integration. It's a really beautiful relationship that I have with her that I actually developed through my time in Sacred Initiation Journey a container that I co-create with my friend Anna. But this beautiful, beautiful modality has blossomed over the last several years. It started out as one-on-one sessions. I literally got brave enough after just doing one-on-one sessions like here and there and people were DMing me. They're like, I want to do this session. And then I had my podcast. And even though there weren't that many people listening to my podcast, to be completely honest with you, there were just the right people because spirit would bring them to me. And I ended up saying on my podcast, hey, I'm offering this multidimensional soul integration. And I created it on my Calendly. (laughs) This is something really funny. I created it on my Calendly and I didn't even have a fancy way of doing it. The people who took this first set of multidimensional soul integration was basically like a higher level of working with me, like a bigger way of working with me kind of like my mentorship is now, where they were wanting to move from just one-on-one sessions, one-off, you know, here and there, to some kind of serious intention. And I, and I said, you know, like, I've got this modality, and here's what we're going to do, and this is how it works. And so we did it. And so I learned a lot. And then I started documenting it. And I started noticing patterns, and I had this specific format of how to do it. And that's when you kind of go, hmm, I should probably maybe think about turning this into its own modality. It feels important, but then everybody gets imposter syndrome because I've had it too. I still get it sometimes. 
And finally, after many, many months of spirit saying, maybe teach somebody how to do this, I opened my multidimensional soul integration practitioner training. Well, little did I know how important this modality would become, even in the short amount of time since I first developed it. What has come through over and over again is confirmation and validation from all kinds of sources, including but not limited to my recent reading of Barbara Marciniak's Bringers of the Dawn. And so today I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about multidimensionality, what that even means, as well as how to access your gifts and incorporate this idea of multidimensional soul integration. Now, of course, this is a wonderful time to learn about it. There are some of you who have heard me talk about it before, and you know that I offer it two times a year. This container is super powerful. I now have several certified MSI practitioners that will be supporting me in this spring 2024 container, and I do it again in the spring and in the fall. But it starts on April 12th, and you can find out more through the link below. I would love to have you join us. This modality, again, is setting you up to overcome a lot of the blocks that I know many of you are feeling because you're ready for that next step. And that next step is accessing all of this multidimensional part of yourself, which we aren't traditionally taught to do. We're like, okay, work with the here and now part of you and sometimes the inner child, which is extremely important. I'm not saying it's not. But once you've done all that and somebody comes to me and they're like, I've done this session and these sessions and this modality and this course and this and this and this. I'm like, okay, you're a prime candidate for multidimensional soul integration, especially if you've done any kind of past life regression or maybe you haven't done an official session with past life regression, but you're starting to remember and have access to memories of past lives. I consider them to be parallel lives like Dolores Cannon mentions too. But that is a perfect sign that whether you do multidimensional soul integration, my modality, or you do it some other way, it's time to bring online those parts of you. They are needed in this phase of Gaia's expansion, in this phase of the collective expansion. There's so much more about this that's going to come through in the April 2024 monthly energy update. I'm building up to it because it is going to blow your mind. The themes, they're all woven together. They're all just super connected and it's coming before me like I couldn't even orchestrate it better. My guides are like, yes, it all makes sense because it's all interwoven. But this multidimensional soul integration is really anchored in the idea that I brought through a couple weeks ago in a podcast episode about shifting from 4D to 5D. 4D is duality. Black and white, light and dark, yin and yang, your side, their side, all the things. And when you begin to release your contracts with 3D, 4D, you step into 5D. And I had a session the other day where someone's like, why do I settle for 5D? I'm going to go like 6D, 7 I'm going to go way beyond. And I'm like, yes, but 5D is the portal to multidimensionality where it doesn't matter which dimension or technically it's a density, density you're in, also dimension you're in. It doesn't matter because in that you're in uni unity consciousness. Everything is you. You are everything. And then all of a sudden... I'm going to tell you one of the biggest things that happens when you start to step into your multidimensionality, into 5D. Your nervous system begins to regulate more easily. You get out of that fight or flight mode because there are no longer just two states, right? There's no longer two states because that's duality. You teach your body that you can hold space for many different feelings and emotions all at one time. You can hold space for many different aspects of yourself all at one time. We are literally going to become a quote-unquote jack of all trades, the true renaissance person. 
who can be in the arts and the sciences because we are it's our divine birthright it's our divine makeup and our blueprint to be multi-dimensional i was just talking with a friend today in fact and we were talking about our human design and i if you look at my birth date and everything i'm a manifesting generator which is obviously one of my you know it's just definitely kind of obvious <laughs> most of my friends are like oh yeah i totally could feel that you were that but i said to her i feel like you could use bringing in a multidimensional soul aspect that has a more reflector capability and it was really interesting how it all dropped in and i said well i, I don't know if i've ever told you this before but i shapeshift according to whatever my client needs whatever I need to be in whatever moment. And because I've integrated so many different soul aspects, I'm able to do that. That's really what shape shifting is. You are just showing one facet of your multidimensional self when it's needed. It's super interesting stuff to think about, isn't it? And just like my podcasts have been lately, I just want to take you through a little breathing now. Because I feel like there's so much activation going on behind the words I'm speaking. There's so much energy coming through now that I'm able to channel through and that you're able to receive. Just holding space for you right now as we are bringing this subject into your field. That you can release any and all programming around fear that you are multifaceted. Any attachment you might have to being monochromatic is the word that's coming in, right? Monochromatic. And now you get to be multicolored, multivibrational, multifaceted. And I think, I suspect that so many starseeds are born with that, like already in their awareness. But you and I both know that many of the systems of our society today, including but not limited to the educational system and the religious systems, do not honor people's multidimensionality. And so what we were taught and modeled was to hide all of those parts of us so we could fit in with everybody else. And it's, it's time to release those programs and those beliefs and really truly step into our superpowers. I keep seeing it like we all have so many superpowers lying dormant. And that's what I mean when I say accessing your multi-dimensional gifts. As you honor and bring forward and and really activate in a way, but it's it's an integration, those different soul aspects that you could see as a parallel life or a past life. Okay, that's one way to put it. What's going to happen is you are bringing on more superpowers, more tools for ascension. And they're in, they're in you. You don't have to look outside yourself. That's why multidimensional soul integration is so affirming to your sovereignty. And that is my hope is that everybody who listens to this podcast knows and understands they are their own best guide. They are their own best mentor in the end. It doesn't mean we have to create a loan, but we are releasing so much deep, 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 deep programming around a guru, a prophet, whatever it might be called, that I, I need to really drive that home for you. I really just want to emphasize that because I, if you remember a couple months ago, I think this was the January, the, actually the 2024 monthly energy update, I talked about the fact that sovereignty is literally the precursor to unity consciousness because you cannot access unity consciousness until you have sovereignty and that's just the way it is that's what my guide showed me it resonated so deeply within me if you have a bunch of disempowered people trying to carry out like a commune just think about that for a moment it's not going to work out it's just not going to work out and that's why some of us know of these communities, bless their hearts, they are trying their very best to bring forward the new earth. But sometimes those foundational principles are slipped through the cracks. 
they slip through the cracks and they forget you have to build that foundation of sovereignty and empowerment in each individual soul before you can come together and then carry out these unified projects. I'm going to say it again, and I've said it before. That's why I have sacred initiation journey, sacred initiation journey, that offering. And you can go to sacredinitiationjourney.com now. It's not on my website. It's own. It's its own thing. It wants to be its own thing. My friend Anna is even leaning into a lot of leadership r- around it, but we are still co-creating that offering. And you know what? It is the foundational piece for so much of what I do. I prefer that most people that work with me take at least Divine Awakening, which is uh, the kind of the the baby version of Sacred Initiation Journey. It's still really powerful. I mean, like calling it a baby. It's the mini version, the mini version, a little bit shorter. So I just want to throw that out there because I can't not, right? I want to just take a moment now as we shift into uh, this podcast a little bit further and bring forward again some of the concepts from Barbara Marciniak's book, Bringers of the Dawn, which by the way, we are discussing in the Star Mothers Worldwide Book Club. And that's a free gathering every month. If you like book clubs and you like reading about this kind of stuff, you should come to the book club. We have these breakout rooms. It's so fun. So go to the Star Mothers portal and you can find out how to do that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to move into this chapter in Ringers of the Dawn called Unlocking the History. This is chapter six, if you're following along or if you have the book and you want to look at it later. And I'm going to kind of move through some of the first few pages of that chapter and stop and go as I bring forward topics and themes related to what we're talking about in the podcast today. So it starts off, DNA carries the coding for this genetic material and its helixes are made up of light encoded filaments tiny gossamer threads that carry information the way fiber optic systems do. The pillar of light that you use to activate yourself and to bring information into your body is also composed of light encoded filaments. And by the way, that is your caw body. That is your caw body. These light encoded filaments carry a vast amount of data and information and your body is filled with them. They are similar to a grand library, a library that is so gigantic it carries the history of your universe. During the course of the Earth's history, there have been many different species who have lived here. You have convinced yourself that humanity is native to this planet. Human beings were put here. People are in for a shock because they are going to discover very shortly the skeletal forms of very different creatures. Then I'm going to move forward. The task you have before you is to consciously command, intend, and will the evolvement of your DNA. Commanding and willing and asking for this is not easy, for you must move through many identities. I'm going to pause right there. That is moving through all those soul aspects. That's how I refer to them in the modality multidimensional soul integration, okay? We have to move through those identities and, and notice them and become aware of them. Okay, moving forward with a quote. From the historical perspective, of your multidimensional existence or essence or soul, you have been all kinds of characters. And some of these experiences have been painful. They have been challenging and difficult. It is time for you to move through the challenges and unlock the history that is inside of your body by allowing the light-coated filaments to rebundle, forming new helixes, and by allowing yourself to be receptive to what this new information in the DNA is going to plug into you. I'll stop there again. That is exactly why it is called an integration. Multidimensional soul integration works at the level of the DNA. This is exactly what I was talking about. And talk and and referring to what she said about the fact that some of your lifetimes have been painful. What happens in multidimensional soul integration is we integrate the highest frequency version of those soul aspects. So you might think, You're going to integrate all of these traumatized parts of you. That's actually not what we do. We reach to the highest timeline. We invite the soul aspect who is in agreement. We get their consent to come and integrate with you and to bring all their gifts. And it's, it's, that's why it's the next level from past life regression. 
nine times out of 10, when I ask a client if they've ever had a past life regression, it involves trauma. It involves some kind of trauma because the healers that we, well, we are more focused on healing than activating still. And I've talked about this before, like we're shifting from healing to activating. In fact, there's a quote about this in about two seconds that I'm going to read. But either way, uh, what we do is we sort of expand beyond that trauma and we bring in that higher frequency version of that lifetime and it, it just neutralizes it. We don't even have to see it, address it, nothing. It's just like, this is quantum, quantum healing in a way. Quantum activation, a lot more is able to be done in a very short amount of time. By the way, I'm all about shortcuts. I am all about shortcuts. And that's, that's what multidimensional soul integration is. From forever, I've always, even when I was in Christianity, and I was like, Oh, I have to declare all my sins to God. Okay. One by one, I'm going to list all my sins. And then I have to ask forgiveness for each and every one. And I'm just like, Jesus, is there another way? <laughs> and even back then, he tried to show me, Yeshua was showing me another way, a quantum way to shift our frequency. Because that's really what you're doing. Okay. For without all the programming and all of the, you know, conditioning and stuff from, organized religion you're really shifting your frequency and he did he's like oh yeah you can do that and so I got I got shown this even when I was not quote-unquote spiritually awakened to what I know now so that's kind of a cool thing but like I said we don't have to address all those painful experiences when we integrate these soul aspects because that's not the lives that we're we're dealing with so let me just move forward and and read a little bit more of this okay because this is the part I was referring to the light encoded filaments are like rays of light that hold a geometric form of language. They come to you from a cosmic database and hold information. Many of you are at a point where you don't need to have a healing done on your body. You need to have a spontaneous education or implant put into your body to teach you. That is what will be coming during the next number of years. And I'm going to stop right there. That technology, my friends, if you want to look at it that way, that implant is literally integrating a part of yourself. It is integrating a, an aspect, a parallel life. And when they are integrated, they will immediately bring online your gifts, parts of you that have been dormant, these filaments. I mean, I like how they explain it, right? It's remembrance. It's all about remembrance. That's why a lot of times when I'm talking about these activations and this information, I'm like, come on, you guys, this is just a remembrance. This is like riding a bike. You've done this before. You're just going to do it again. You've got this. So in a nutshell, I love how they kind of sum up what multidimensional soul integration and other modalities similar to it are doing for humanity. Again, just to reiterate what they said in the book, the, the Pleiadians said, it's less about needing a healing and more about spontaneous education, which I call activation. And it's in my name, you know, it's what I do. It's what I'm called to do. And it's what so many of us are being called to do. That's why I'm offering my Lightworker Quantum Leap, because my Lightworker Quantum Leap is upgrading your modalities and also your business so that you can share your modalities because there's really no sense in upgrading all your modalities and not having anybody to do them on. So spirits, like you cannot teach anything about like modalities or even not, not just multidimensional soul integration, but any modality. You can't teach anything about that without teaching them how to then get their word out there and, and, and run all of it. We need the masculine and the feminine. Anyhow, that is my Lightworker Quantum Leap. I didn't mention it before in the podcast, so now you've got it. If you came to my Lightworker Business Workshop, you might have heard me mention that, and you can find out more through the link below. This is an incredible offering that I'm going to be doing, and it'll happen during the month of April. It's crazy what's coming in for this. It's like, it's a three-week course. I'm like, how am I going to teach all this in three weeks? They're like, no, 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 no. We're in quantum time now. Everything's going fast. You're not going to do long containers anymore. We're done. We're done. There's too many people who need it. It needs to be done fast and they want it fast. 
and they're going to be activated quickly. That's why soul integration doesn't take six months. The multidimensional soul integration takes a matter of weeks. It's possible. We just have to release all those limitations and all those preconceived notions we have about how long an activation and even like what we've used to think of as a healing can take us. Time is speeding up. That's another theme that's going to come through for April, but I don't want to spoil it too much. (laughs) All right, my friends, we are at the close of the podcast and I am just so grateful for you. I honestly am. I am sending you so much love. I'm reminding you that I am you and you are me and we are we. Until next time.